Four. Dipti is uh, joining me over the other side of the set. She's got the newspapers with us today. Dipti is starting uh, a new study. Unfortunately, uh, bears even more bad news if there can't be enough bad news for the planet. That's right. 2019 was the warmest year on record for the world's oceans. That's according to this uh, study published in the journal uh, Advances in Atmospheric Sciences. To put that into context, or, uh, one professor interviewed by Vice says it's about the equivalent of five, Hi five Hiroshima bombs of heat every second, day wow. and night, 365 days a year. The ocean's temperatures warmed by 0 0.075 degrees uh, in 2019, which might not sound like a lot, but the amount of energy that's needed for uh, that's needed to be absorbed for it to rise like that is astro astronomical. Uh, the single year increase in stored energy between 2018 and 2019 was equivalent to 394 million Hiroshima bombs. Wow, it's a scary uh, statistics, isn't it? You found a, a good explainer, haven't you, in The Guardian, this is, on what all of this means, concretely, of course, uh, for global warming. Well, that's right. One might ask, why does that affect us? We don't live in the oceans, we live on the land. But um, in this vice, uh, in, the, in that vice article I showed you earlier, the professor explains that oceans absorb over 90% of the heat that humans are pumping out into the atmosphere, and it's what shields us on land from even higher temperatures. Uh, so when the ocean warms up, as The Guardian explains, this is irrefutable proof that climate change is happening, and it's happening on the oceans first. Concretely, this could uh, result in more floods, more droughts, more wildfires. So the early beginnings of what which we're starting to see, for instance, in Australia, um, coral bleaching, sea level rises, which will no doubt uh, impact low-lying cities. It's also prompted the UN to dr uh, issue a draft biodiversity plan that calls on governments to protect one-third of all lands and oceans, and calls for major reductions in pollution between now and 2030. 2030. Admittedly, it's a new plan to replace the old one that didn't live up to expectations. So, uh, not a very positive outlook there. Now, dipsy has got an anniversary for us uh, for this next story, a story which I think it's probably the first big story. I remember covering when I first arrived at France 24, in fact. Nine years ago today, in fact, the Tunisian president, Ben Ali's uh, regime, fell in Tunisia. That's right. There were two key elements in that. There was the death of the young, unemployed Tunisian man who set himself alight, sparking protests around the country that led to January the 14th, 2011. President uh, Zine El Abidin Ben Ali's 23-year uh, authoritarian rule in Tunisia came to an end. He fled the country. It quickly spread uh, in beginning, uh, becoming what we know as the Arab Spring uprising, with mixed results to many other countries in the Arab world. In Tunisia, uh, this paper, this local paper says um, that, quote, uh, the story is unfinished. Uh, while political advancements were made, economically and socially, the inequalities have increased in Tunisia. That's a legacy nine years on. Uh, another newspaper, Asaba, an Arab language paper, is also pretty critical, noting, I quote, the Tunisian revolution was one for the dignity of Tunisians, and it calls on uh, for it to be respected as such. Also noting that a poll shows 90% of Tunisians feel, young Tunisians feel, the state of politics doesn't really represent them. Now, it's uh, award season, as it is every uh, January gets underway. The Oscars nomination came out yesterday. Critics say the Academy, once again, are really blinding in its lack of diversity. Yeah, admittedly, there were a few, very few, uh, culturally diverse nominations, like the South Korean film Parasite, which was nominated for Best Picture and Best International Film. But otherwise, as uh, the Boston Globe says, the Oscars reads like a Hollywood boys club among the films that uh, picked uh, up a lot of uh, nominations, an immersive war film, epic mobster movie, supervillains, and a 1960s buddy movie. Um, only one actress of color, Cynthia Erivo, nabbed a nomination, and no woman in the Best, cate best Directors category, despite a deep pool of talent from which to choose. The Daily Telegraph's film critic puts it best, I quote, at a time when cinema is more multifaceted than ever before, it must take real effort to be this unimaginative. Cutting stuff. Finally, from Dipsy, I'm looking forward to her doing this story. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's <laughs> website, Goop, I think that's what it's called, yeah. uh, makes headlines 
all the time for its wacky pseudoscience advice to women. This time it's for a very strange object being sold online. Actually, the funny thing is the object in itself, not so strange. It's a candle, you know, you yeah. can get candles anywhere. But uh, Gwyneth <laughs> Paltrow is once again gracing us with something we definitely don't need and most of us don't ever want. It's a candle scented like her vagina, specifically <coughs> uh, her vagina, it must be said. Even worse uh, than selling such a contraption is the price, um, Stuart, it's $75. Oh my goodness. And if that doesn't make you question your faith in humanity, as this writer here from Pop Sugar says, the fact that it's sold out online no. certainly will. There's a <laughs> waiting list. I've signed you up already, Stuart, <laughs> for this wow. candle. Um, the French paper Le Figaro reminds us that Gwyneth Paltrow is not a medical professional. Um, they've put together a list of her worst, worst health guru advice, including vaginal steaming, which was slammed by gyne gynecologists, you know, the actual medical mm. professionals. She also um, suggested daily colon cleanses with, co <laughs> with coffee, which doctors absolutely have downright <laughs> advised against. So please take her advice with a grain of salt. Better yet, yeah. don't take her advice at all. She's not a medical professional. How on earth do they know that the candidate... No, no, I'm Never just mind. No, not going into that. All right, they're all with the papers on for us, 24.